here, Dan, we have a lot of work to do. I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> what are you? Some kind of scaredy cat afraid of heights? <laughs> I'm not afraid. Well, then get on up here. I need that hammer. I just don't think this is safe. Safe? Shmi! What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> of scaffolds, but they all have the same purpose, to provide a safe, elevated work platform for its users. In this program, we are going to cover some basic requirements which apply to you as a user of scaffolds, no matter which type you work from. But to help you understand the requirements, we need to first distinguish among the different types of scaffolds. Scaffolds generally fall into one of two classes, supported scaffolds and suspension scaffolds. Supported scaffolds include metal tube and coupler scaffolds, wood pole scaffolds, prefabricated metal frame scaffolds, which usually have wheels or casters so they can be moved from place to place, and more simple pump jack and ladder jack scaffolds. Suspension scaffolds are suspended by fiber or wire ropes from an overhead structure. They can have one rope, like a bosun's chair or work cage, or have two or more ropes, like scaffolds used for exterior building maintenance. To help assure the safety of workers on scaffolds, detailed standards and regulations for their design and use have been developed by various organizations. It is very important that these regulations and standards are closely followed. In this program, we're going to focus on the safety requirements which apply no matter what type of scaffold you use. This includes who can design and build a scaffold, things you should look for before getting on a scaffold, fall protection requirements, and some general safety procedures about working from scaffolds. However, it is also critical that you have additional training on the specific type of scaffold you work on. This training should cover procedures for proper use, maximum intended load, handling materials on the scaffold, and recognizing potential hazards. And if you are involved in erecting, disassembling, moving, operating, repairing, maintaining, or inspecting a scaffold, further training is also required. Okay, let's start at the beginning. The first thing that any scaffold user has to be concerned about is how the scaffold is designed and constructed. A high percentage of scaffold-related deaths and serious injuries occur when scaffolds or their components fail. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Me too. You know, Dan, I think we can get this job done in no time at all, right after lunch. Yeah, building this scaffold was really a brilliant idea. I know. That's why I do the thinking. It must have taken a lot of training to build a scaffold like that. Oh, no training at all. It just comes naturally. <laughs> Scaffolds must be designed by qualified persons to meet strict criteria established by standard setting and regulatory bodies. The basic design requirement is that scaffolds be able to support their own weight and at least four times the maximum intended load. Additionally, the ropes and connecting hardware on suspended scaffolds must be capable of supporting at least six times the maximum intended load. The specific requirements for designing scaffolds are more complex. They include size and spacing requirements for vertical, horizontal, and diagonal members depending on the scaffold height and weight to be supported. The bottom line is clear. Don't design a scaffold unless you are qualified to do so. And this includes adding to the scaffold's working height. You are not permitted to do so unless you are qualified. Erecting, moving, dismantling, 
or altering scaffolds must also be done under the direction of a qualified competent person. A competent person is an individual who is capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards associated with the scaffold or work on it, and has the authority to take prompt corrective measures when necessary. All scaffolds must also be inspected for visible defects by a competent person before each work shift and after any event which could affect the scaffold's ability to support a load. However, never just rely on others to make sure the scaffold is safe. After all, it's your life on the line. I think we need to be a little bit lower. No, I know that. Just a little bit more. Now leave the driving to me. You go do something else. I don't like the looks of this rope. You are such a worrywart. If this keeps up, we'll have to find another line of work. Precisely. <laughs> Scaffolds should be continually checked for defects. Here are some things you should look for. First, the upright supports and horizontal members of supported scaffolds must be square and level. Then, make sure all cross and diagonal bracing is in place and securely attached. Supported scaffold poles, legs, posts, frames, and uprights must sit on base plates or other adequate firm foundation to avoid settling or shifting. Supported scaffolds with a height to base ratio of more than four to one must be restrained from tipping by guying, tying, bracing, or other equivalent means. For certain types of scaffolds, this means tying into the building or structure, or for others, it means adding outrigger frames. Some agencies have an even stricter height to base ratio of three to one. Because suspended scaffolds can swing and move in the wind, the platform should also be secured against swaying. Let's focus now on the part of the scaffold you are in constant contact with while working, the platform. The basic requirement for platform planks is the same for the entire scaffold. They must be able to support their own weight and four times the maximum intended load. When wood planks are used, make sure they are scaffold grade, appropriate for the load and length of the span. Say, where did you get these new planks? They're not new. What'd you say about the zoo? Not zoo, new. These planks are sort of old. Cold? You, you've got a chill? No, these planks had a few cracks in them, so I painted them. Cracks? <laughs> Wally. Don't you think you should use the ladder? Check each plank prior to use to be sure the plank is not warped, damaged, or otherwise unsafe. Planks cannot be painted or otherwise have the top or bottom surfaces obscured to make it difficult to notice defects. And make sure you always take good care of wood planks. When overstressed, they can fail later under lighter loads. For example, dropping planks to the ground when dismantling a scaffold, or using them as a ramp can weaken them or cause cracks. It is best for planks to be stored indoors and stacked so air can circulate around them. Planks stored outdoors can decay from moisture and insect attack, especially if kept under a tarp. Scaffold platforms must be fully planked between the front uprights and the guardrail supports. Platforms and walkways must be at least 18 inches wide and placed or secured so they will not slip out under pressure. Fall protection is the next major issue for scaffold users. The rule is simple. If you are on a scaffold more than 10 feet above a lower level, you must be protected. There are two basic types of fall protection, guardrails and personal fall arrest systems. Depending on the type of scaffold you use, you will need one or both. On supported scaffolds, fall protection is generally provided by guardrails. Guardrails must be installed along all open sides and ends of platforms. This includes the front edge of the platform, unless it is less than 14 inches, in most cases, from the face of the work. That 
What's good, Dad? And just a little farther. But it's so far, I don't think I can reach it. You can reach it. Now go ahead, just a little bit but more. But I'm afraid I'm going to fall. You're not going to fall. Now just a little more. Here, give it to me. If things are going to be done correctly around here, I have to do them myself. Aren't you afraid you're going to fall? I'm not going to fall. Watch this. Guardrails <laughs> must be substantial. They must be constructed of 2x4 lumber, steel tubing, or angle iron, and need a top rail capacity of 200 pounds. Guardrails must be positioned at a height of approximately 42 inches above the platform. Along with guardrails, your work platform should also have midrails, screens, and or tow boards to provide protection to people below from falling objects. Now for some types of scaffolds, guardrails are not practical. These include ladder jack scaffolds and bosun's chairs. For these types of scaffolds, personal fall arrest systems must always be used. Single point and two point suspended scaffolds require the use of both guardrails and personal fall arrest systems. Personal fall arrest systems consist of a body harness and shock absorbing lanyard fastened to either a structural member or a securely rigged vertical or horizontal lifeline. For obvious reasons, the lanyard must never be attached directly to the scaffold. If you use a personal fall arrest system, make sure you are fully trained in the correct procedures for using it and taking care of it. Your life depends on it. This includes those of you who erect or dismantle scaffolds. Fall protection is required unless the competent person determines it is not feasible or it presents a greater hazard. Let's talk now about some general safety procedures when working from a scaffold. Of course, the first rule is to make sure you never load a scaffold in excess of its maximum intended load or rated capacity. Even a well-designed scaffold can fail if stretched beyond its limits. Next, when scaffold platforms are more than two feet above the level you are on, ladders or stairs must be provided and used. Cross braces are never to be used as a means of access. Ladders or stairs must also be provided when erecting or dismantling a scaffold, unless the competent person determines they are not feasible or create a greater hazard. This fall protection equipment makes me feel safe. Me too. Even one fall is one fall too many. Wally, this piece doesn't seem to fit. Well, how is it marked? It's supposed to be piece number eight. Did you get the wrong one? Well, that explains it. This is marked piece number ten. Here. Give that to me. Do I have to do everything myself? Watch out for the power line. Whenever working from heights or handling tools over your head, you have to be concerned about the presence of overhead electrical lines. Sometimes people forget to look or forget they are there. Well, don't forget. Many people are killed each year from contact with overhead power. Make sure you always survey the work area for overhead power lines prior to starting any overhead work or work from elevated surfaces. If you do have to work in the vicinity of power lines, make sure you follow regulations for safe clearances. Scaffolds should not be moved until all unattached materials and tools have been cleared from the platform. While regulations permit a worker to remain on the scaffold while it is being moved under certain conditions, it is just not a good idea. Before rolling the scaffold, make sure you have sufficient help and you survey the area for any holes or obstacles, changes in grade, and overhead obstructions. When acids or other corrosive substances are used from a scaffold, ropes must be shielded, treated, or be made of a material that will not be damaged if it comes into contact with the substance being used. Similarly, when heat producing processes like welding, burning, riveting, or open flame work are conducted on a scaffold, suspension ropes must be shielded. If you arc weld from a metallic suspended scaffold, there are specific insulation and grounding safeguards required. If you do this kind of work, make sure you know the requirements. 
Work should not be conducted from a scaffold during storms or high winds unless a competent person has determined that it is safe for employees to be on the scaffold and the employees are protected by a personal fall arrest system or windscreens. You should also never work on scaffolds covered with snow, ice, or other slippery materials except as necessary for removal of such materials. Well, is it here? Of course it's here, somewhere. I thought I told you to take everything we need today and put it up here. I did, I did. Well, don't just stand there. Do something to help me. Oh. Wally, is it break time? Don't be silly. We just took a break. Then why is Charlie taking a nap? Don't allow debris or other materials to accumulate on a scaffold. They could create a hazardous situation for you or others. Finally, don't get on a scaffold if your physical condition is such that you feel dizzy or unsteady in any way. So that's it. Scaffold safety. Don't become a victim of a scaffold fall. Make sure the scaffold is safe. Know what you are doing. Protect yourself and be alert to hazards. Remember. Cracks! Jump for the power line. Me. Safe schmee. What could possibly go wrong? 